Hi, Cyclops FPV here, and today I'm going to be showing you a video on how to modify a Beta FPV radio light radio. Now, how this all came about is my radio T light by a Radio Master, um, well, jumper rather. Although Radio Master have bought one out, but um, it's not as good. Um, I wanted an antenna that was like this and the beta fpv one hasn't got one it's got um a patch antenna which is uh it's basically a sticker with um a sort of figure of eight kind of um track inside like it's just a piece of metal that goes around which you can peel off and um now don't get me wrong I've never had a problem with this. I've flown out to about 300 meters and I've even gone behind me and behind stuff and the the panel the the panel antenna is quite good. I've, I've never had any problems with it. But I just wanted to see if I can because I might even leave this as it is. I don't know yet. Um I, yeah, I I I found that it, it was quite good. Now these these um controllers are um twin battery like a 2s and um obviously they're gonna they're gonna have a little bit more power and they're 80 milliwatts and this thing here which doesn't have very good range as standard because they only use a single cell battery um they're only sort of 4.2 volts so you're not going to get as much power out of it but being being 80 milliwatts now the SC is 100 milliwatts the the newer version of this but I wouldn't recommend getting that because there's been a lot of problems so um, I've never I've got two of these this is a uh, an FR Sky and this is a Bayang one and it's the Bayang one that I did the model uh, the modification on so I'm hoping this is a 3 dBi antenna and I'm hoping that the 80 milliwatts will, will get me, well, the field that I'm going to be flying in, because I'm going to be doing a test video at the end of this, um, we're going to go try and go out to 400 meters. Um, I would have liked a higher gain antenna, but um, 3 dBi should do it with the 80 milliwatts at hand. Um, you're also going to need to get some of these. Now, these are cheap as chips. You want to get um, you get a pack of five, and you'll probably never use all of them. Um, this these are these are two point four gigabytes, not five point eight. Although you can get them in five point eight as well, and uh, they got a tiny UFL connector. Um, and the way you want to do this, you get these screws with it. You want to. I'll take them all out and I'll show you. You want a serrated you want the serrated one at the bottom because that's got to grip the plastic so that will go through the plastic then you want your spring washer on the top so that would be on the outside of the controller and then finally your locking nut which will lock the whole thing in now you can get these in sma and rsma and you can also get the antenna um, to correspond with uh, whatever one you used. Now I'll show you how how you how you do this. Right, first of all, you want to take the battery out. You want to take the two screws out from inside the battery bay, and then the the six screws that are in the handles. So you, thus, 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 blah, blah, blah. Then you want to take the controller out, and this is what it looks like inside. Okay, now. You've got a UFL connector that goes on there and the way I mounted this, because the wires are a bit long, I mounted it in between the boards and coming out the top. Now you're going to need, when, when, you, when you get this all stripped down, there'll be a panel, um, like a sticker, with the wire going into it. That'll peel off. That's a straightforward light, just peel it off, throw it away. Because uh, once you bend it, you can't reuse it. You want a, a 7mm drill 
and you want to drill the top part of the section. Don't don't do don't do the bottom part because the bottom part is the battery compartment. So you want the top. Now what you're gonna to have to do, you're gonna to have to take the four screws off. That one, that one there, you got one there and one there. You don't have to take the gimbals off, you just undo these four, and this plate will will move. You don't need to unplug the um, wires, at least I didn't anyway. I just because the thing is you're not gonna get the angle, you're not gonna get um because these are quite long, the the threaded end, you can't get that through the hole without removing that board. But you can, you can, that board will move enough without taking the board completely off. You just have to, because this will come off with it. So you want to lift it up and just slide it back slightly. These wires will stop it. I mean, you can unplug these if you want, but I, I, did, I found I didn't have to. And then what I did was I run the wire right the way underneath both boards and then coming back up here and then it's just a push fit onto this section here put your put your serrated washer at the bottom so it grips the plastic put your spring washer at the top and then put your locking nut on the top of that you might have to um, use a spanner there and there but don't over tighten it as I said that's a six mil hole a uh, seven mil hole and I I, I fold it just slightly bigger, just so I had a bit of adjustment um, left in it. And while I was there, I, I adjusted my throttle, my throttle plate as well, because I like a nice loose throttle, so I did that. And that's basically it. You put your four screws back on, make sure nothing's in the way, nothing's, um, nothing's bind, binding, you know, there's, the gimbals don't rub against anything. Get rid of all the swath that's inside, all the plastic, because it will make a mess. This um, this plastic's quite hard to drill, and uh, it makes a lot of mess. So you want to get you want to get all that off, blow it through or whatever, and then put it all back together again. Put the antenna on top, and you're good to go. Right now, I'll tell you one thing, and this goes for the T light as well. Do not, under any circumstance, switch this on without the antenna connected because you will blow your um your transmitter board that 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 is a fact you will blow it so never ever switch it on with without one of these now what i did as well you're gonna you're gonna think well how am i gonna get it in the box now what i did on my other one i i um drilled a little little hole there so that when you put it in there, you have to take the antenna off, unfortunately. But when you put it in there, I'll, sh I'll show you on the T light because it's exact. I've done it exactly the same. So you you finish flying, you unscrew that. This is exactly the same box, by the way. And then it just it just you, you drill a hole. You drill a hole in the beta FPV box just there. Just enough for it to sit in, and it will sit in like that. Easy. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And then you put it all back together again. You put all your screws back on. You put your antenna back on, and then you switch it on. And it will work. It will work as, as it should do. And that's basically it. Simple as that. And... An omni omni uh, antenna will work a lot better than a than a patch antenna, and uh, it will give you a lot more range as well. Um, like I said, stay stay tuned for the end of this video. We're going to do um, a flight test up to 400 meters because that's the furthest field that I can fly in. Um, the other thing you can do. Is get a higher DB, DB gain antenna. Now you can go up to six DBI, or you can. You, I think you can even go up to eight. But the problem is the antennas are very long. So um, you know, obviously, that's going to be a factor that you're going to have to figure out if you want to put it all back in the same box again. 
But for, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to use um, a 3DBI antenna and, uh, you know, do, do some flying and, and we'll see what we can get out of it. Right, well that's it folks. Um, flight footage coming up next. I'll catch you in the next one guys. Bye. Well folks, here we go then. 400 metres across. I've got a 25 milliwatt um, camera on there. So let's see if we can make it right across. The camera's going to crap out a little bit because it's only 25 milliwatts. Um, it was very, very windy and I was in angle mode because I wanted to... Um, well, actually, I, I, I forgot I was in... Um, I thought I was in acro mode, but I wasn't. I was in angle. That's why I found it a bit hard to uh, sort of fight at the wind. But, yeah, it's really, really windy. I just about made it back. I actually crashed because of the wind in a minute. And here we come to the end. And I made it 400 metres across. And do you know what? I still had signal. I was surprised I still had camera, but I still had signal on a transmitter, so I could have gone even further. This is the wind blowing me back mainly. I'll do a couple of victory rolls now to celebrate. But yeah, I'm really pleased that worked out. That was really, really good. Really good mod. And don't forget, it's an Omni antenna as well, so I can fly behind me as well um, and I could have come back a different direction but I was going to go to the other side of the field and come back the sort of long way but it was so windy I just had no chance and here we are so I'm coming up to the camera now just to show you that uh, you know I am using the same transmitter but that was very pleasing. I'm glad about that. I still don't know if I'm going to do the FR Sky one like that, but um, that was a very, very handy uh, little mod. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Um, subscribe, like, whatever. I'll catch you later. Bye.